Hello, everybody. Welcome today. What I want to do is uh, go to Matthew 28, and I want to read one verse of Scripture, a passage we all know very, very well. It's Matthew 28, 18. And here's what it says. And Jesus came and spoke to his disciples, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. But what I want us to see before we even begin this message is that when he says, all power is given unto me, he uses the Greek word exousia, not dunamis or energe. Those two words, dunamis and energe, from which we get energy and dynamic, those are power. But the word exousia is authority out of his being, authority, from his being, not his actions. See, that's the difference in authority and power. So what Jesus was saying was not that all power is given unto me. He was saying all authority is given unto me. All. How much does that leave over? Zero for the devil. <laughs> Zero for principalities and powers. Zero. Now, what is authority? Now, I, I've, got to, I've got to do this. This is just preliminary to everything that we're doing, okay? Um, I'm going to do this. Watch. E, X, S, <laughs> E, X, S, O, U, S, I, A. There's the Greek word. And, 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 and look here now, this word. E-X, E-X is out of, out of, meaning from, meaning from, usia, usia. And this is my inner self, my being, my being, my being. This doesn't depend on something I do. It depends on who I am. This is authority. Now, power, watch, power is the ability to effect change. Let, let me give you what I jotted down. The ability to overcome opposition. That's power. The ability to overcome opposition. To come out on top. That's power. But now, authority is the right to power. The right to the ability to overcome opposition. I have the right to exercise it. Not because of what I've done, but because of who I've become, what I've become. Now, I want to talk to us today about from victim to victor. From victim to victor. And I have three things that I want to talk about. Uh, three steps, if you will, to bring me from being a victim to being a victor. These were all taken by Jesus at his cross. All I need do is apprehend them and then accept them and then internalize them and incarnate them into the way I live and move and have my being, my thinking. If I can do that, I can move in every circumstance from being a victim to being a victor. Are you ready? Step number one, realize, realize that Jesus disarmed Satan's power in me. I'm going to come put that on the board now. Number one, number one, Jesus, I told you every one of these, Jesus did at Calvary's cross for us. He made us more than a conqueror. Jesus disarmed. Now watch these, the, these words here. Disarmed. Satan's 
power over me or against me. Power. All right? Disarmed Satan's power over me. Now look at, at Colossians chapter 2. It's, it's not an easy scripture. I'll give you that. But it is a fabulous scripture, a great scripture that we all need to incarnate. I'm going to read the American Standard Version today. Uh, you can look it up in whatever Bible you're using. But the American Standard Version today says this. Now what? watch. Jesus blotted out the handwritten, that is legalistic, ordinances. Ordinances, dekaioma, which are righteous producing acts, deeds. See, this is legalism. This is what happened to Judaism many, 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 many centuries ago. Jesus blotted out the handwritten ordinances. Thou shalt do this, thou shalt not do that, thou shalt, thou shalt not. That was against us. Contrary, then parenthesis, disastrous to us. And took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. In other words, he took all of these legalistic, law-keeping, righteous-producing deeds and nailed them to his cross. And when he did that, here's the, here's the great word, he spoiled, he spoiled principalities. There's, that's the word there, I like that word. He spoiled principalities and powers openly for everybody at all time, triumphing over them in his cross. That is, he disarmed, he spoiled Satan's power in me. Now, I, I, want, I want you to see something. Look at 1 Corinthians 2.8. 1 Corinthians 2.8. I'm going to give you 7 and 8 because we need 7 just as a diving board into 8. We speak, Paul says, the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God established before the world for our glory. God's always been in charge. He just doesn't broadcast everything that he does. He doesn't tell the enemy ahead of time what he's going to do. Look at verse 8. Which none of the princes, principalities, of this world knew. Because if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that incredible? God disarmed Satan's power over me at Calvary. In his wisdom, the mystery known before the foundations of the world which none of the principalities and powers that crucified Jesus knew. Otherwise, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Because you see, the key word here in Colossians 2.15 is spoiled. Spoiled. Here's the, it's the Greek word apek duo. But here's what it means. It means he stripped bare Satan's power against me at Calvary. It means he disarmed him of all his weapons. He pulled all his teeth, yanked out all his fangs, whatever your image of Satan is, and divested him of all his rights at Calvary. When Jesus had lived a perfect sinless life. He had incarnated 
the kingdom of God, the righteousness of God within himself. And yet, principalities and powers, using willing men, crucified him at Calvary. When they did that, they broke the rules of engagement between God and the devil. And it was over. It was over. They forfeited then the battle. And God disarmed them. God divested Satan of all his rights against us in Jesus on that cross. All of it poured out on Jesus meant that none of it can be poured out on us if we know who we are in him. So step number one, step number one in moving from victim to victor is this. I realize Satan's power over me is disarmed in Christ. Jesus said, all authority, all right to power is given unto me in heaven and in the earth. That means there's nothing left over for Satan and his minions. Step number one. Step number two, look at this. Step number two, from victim to victor, is realize this. Number two. Number two. Jesus damaged Satan's person in me. Wow. Watch. Now, note the word damaged now. He damaged Satan's person. Not just his power, but his person in me. In Christ. Or against me in Christ. Now, when I, I, when I make that, I, it's not an X, that's a key, a, a Greek key, and it, and it always stands for Christ in the Bible. Jesus damaged Satan's person against me in Christ. So he not only disarmed his power, but he damaged his person. Now, we looked at Colossians 2.15 there. Let's come to Hebrews 2.14 in this passage. Here's what it says. For as much then as the children, that's we, are partakers of flesh and blood, and we are, here it is, we, we all live in it, he, Jesus, also partook of the same. He became incarnated. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Now, I know a lot of people misapply this passage. The devil is not dead. He has not been made extinct. He's still around, and he still does a lot of damage. So we have to look at this word destroy, don't we? And it's the Greek word apolumi, a p o. L-L-U-M-I. Learn that word, if you will, because it's in the, in the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, uh, Satan is called Apollyon. Apollyon, that's this word, the noun. The noun. This is the verb, but the noun of this, Apollyon, means destroyer. Destroyer. But... Look at, look at it. I, I want to show it to you now. Um, it has two parts to it. Apo, A-P-O, which means apart. It means from or apart. And then lumi, L-U-M, L-L-U-M-I, means to pull, to pull apart. So look. Here's what Vine says about it. Vine says the idea is not extinction, but ruin. 
Not loss of being, but loss of well-being. On that cross, when Jesus cried out, it's finished, declared it's finished, it's done, what he meant was that Genesis 3.15 was fulfilled, where God said, I will put enmity between you and the woman between your seed and her seed. Her seed, born of a woman, shall bruise your head, but you shall bruise his heel. (laughs) Jesus had to give up his life to put his heel on Satan's head at Calvary. There's the fulfillment of Genesis 3.16. Yes, yes. Jesus died. His heel was bruised. But Satan's head was bruised at Calvary. I remember years ago, I was a little boy, a a very small boy. I must have been five, six years old. And my my dad was, was a good fisherman, a good country fisherman, and he loved to fish the back rivers of uh, streams uh, of the rivers of South Georgia. And we were fishing one day, and he pulled the boat up near a tree, and he laid out the, the anchor, and I was up under a little tree fishing, and he was out, had a better perspective, because he was the one going to catch the fish, not me. But I was sitting there fishing and watching him fish. And my dad turned around in the boat and he said, son, be very still. Don't move a muscle. And he reached down under the seat. And I didn't even know he'd brought it. And he pulled out a little small 22 rifle, 22 caliber rifle. And he took that rifle and he aimed it straight at me, straight at my head. And I said, oh my goodness, what have I? <laughs> no, I trusted my dad. And I just looked at my dad, and I didn't move. I did exactly what he said. And he raised that rifle up just over my head, about two feet over my head. And he he waited for just an instant, and pow, he pulled that trigger. Pop, right up over my head. Of course, I jumped into his arms. He grabbed me and moved the boat out of the way. And I looked back. And there had been swinging over the top of my head a big water moccasin, poisonous water moccasin, just about ready to drop down on this little target that was in that corner of that boat and to bite me and to store me up for food. My dad caught him right in the top of the head and he nailed his head to the tree. He nailed that venomous serpent's head to that tree. We went on, got away, and (laughs) I was glad to get away. But when we came back an hour or two later, I looked at that tree, and my dad pointed and said, look at that, son. And that old snake's head was nailed to that tree, but he was still moving in his death throes. He was moving. He was moving. And I was as scared of him when he was wagging his tail as I had been earlier on. This is what Jesus did for us at Calvary. It cost him his life. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes on that tree we are healed. Step two from victim to victor. Number one, realize that Jesus disarmed Satan's power against me. He has no more right to power. All authority is mine, said Jesus. I have nailed his ordinances against you to my cross. 
you're free from. Number two, I have damaged his person against you at Calvary. No, he's not extinct. He's still around. But if you truly know who you are, and you will recognize that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, he is a defeated foe. His teeth have been pulled. His head is nailed to Calvary. All that's left of him is that fear, his wiles, his strategies against you. Step number three. From victim to victor is to realize this. Number three. Jesus... Number three, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, nobody else. I, I don't need anything else. Now, I'm glad to have the tradition of the church. I'm glad, I'm glad to have the local church. I'm glad to have the universal ecclesia. I'm glad to have all the saints. I'm glad to have the Bible. I'm glad to have everything that the Christian faith provides for me. But, but this is who did it all. Jesus did it. And he did it at Calvary. And it's done once and for all, never to be undone. Jesus dissolved. Look at this now. Here's where it comes into us. He dissolved Satan's product in me. He dissolves Satan's product in me. Wow. What does that mean? Look at 1 John 3, 8. We're blessed to have a great scripture for each one of these. Colossians 2, 15. And then we just worked out with Hebrews 2.14. And now we have 1 John 3.8. Here's what it says. He that habitually sins is of the devil. For the devil is sin's origin. For this purpose the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Now, two key words in this great, great text. Works and destroy. Let's take works first. Works. Ergon. E-R-G-O-N. Ergon. It's effects on me. Satan's effects on me. Satan's gains against me. Satan's products in me. The Bible says Jesus dissolved them. Dissolved them. When Jesus came into my life, the Holy Spirit took up his residence on the inside of me. He began to dissolve and wash away the sins and the wounds and the pains and the hurts and the effects. A victim is someone who focuses on his abuse. I, I'm no good. I'll, I'll never amount to anything. I can't do anything right. Everything seems to go wrong for me. These are the works of the devil. Jesus dissolved their effects. He wiped away their gains. He put to naught their products inside us. Jesus came to destroy that victim syndrome. Now the word, the key word then, the next key word is destroy. And here's, here's what that word is. That word is 
Luso, L-U-S-O. It means to undo, undo, unbind, unbind, loose, unravel, divorce, separate, wash away. <laughs> Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, I am a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, it's a process. It's a process. Oh, it's done. If I die now, God will look at me as though the work was completed. But I know it's not fully completed, and it is a process going on inside me. God is every day unbinding, unloosing, unshackling me from my victimhood to make me more than a conqueror, a victor in him. Paul said it like this, Philippians 3.13, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forth to those things which are before me, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I love what Jeremiah said. In 29, 11, he said, I know the thoughts I have for you, thoughts of peace and not evil, and to give you a blessed end, a future you long for. I am no longer a victim. You are no longer a victim. You are now a victor in Christ. Because Jesus disarmed Satan's power over you. He damaged Satan's person against you. And he dissolved Satan's product inside you. Now I can say with the great John. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And you can say it too. God bless you. I'll see you next time. This has been brought to you by Ron Cottle Ministries. For more information, please call us at 706-256-0100, extension 217, or visit our website, roncottleministries.com.